As all of you have committed a breach of faith, the Archbishop will now pass judgment. Inciting a kingdom noble to rebel. Unlawful entry. The attempted assassination of the Archbishop. An attack on the Holy Mausoleum. It is unnecessary to go on, followers of the Western Church. What? We have nothing to do with the Western Church. You have already been identified. Please spare us your second-rate theater. Dishonoring a holy ceremony is worthy of death for a member of the Church. You are well past the hope of redemption. If you have any grace remaining, you will willingly offer your life as atonement for this crime. No, this isn't what we were told would happen. We've been deceived! It's no use arguing. Whatever your excuse, the punishment stands. May your souls find peace as they return to the Goddess. Wait! Please! The Goddess would never forgive you for our execution! Monster! We know you've already slaughtered many of our fellow brethren like this. This concludes the investigation. Please remove these poor lost souls from my sight. That's that, I suppose. The assassination attempt, the attack on the Holy Mausoleum. It was all the Western Church's doing. That masked knight who led the attack somehow managed to disappear without a trace. The Church of Saros clearly isn't as unified as it would hope to appear. It seems the Bishop of the Western Church was always opposed to the Church being ruled centrally from Garrig Mach. Perhaps they hoped to remove the Archbishop in order to completely strip the central church of its authority. Oh, that's right. Geralt mentioned that you were raised without any exposure to the church. In order to function more efficiently, the Church of Saros is split into several smaller entities. The central church is the largest and leads the organization from Garrig Ma. The western church extends from Castle Gaspar, where Lord Lenato rebelled into the fort. They can be found just beyond the most renowned stronghold of the kingdom, the fortress city of Arian Road. It seems the knights have been tasked with subduing the leaders of the Western Church. We may be given the opportunity to help them with their mission. To think, our own professor was born in Fodlan, and yet knew nothing of the Church. <laughs> I never imagined explaining something so basic to an instructor of mine. You're something of a special case, are you not? How strange that the Archbishop would ask someone like that to lead her students. There's clearly more to that decision than we know. Professor, do you agree with the Archbishop's actions? There you are, Professor. It seems Lady Rhea would like a word with you. Come with me. The Archbishop lives. Not that I had ever placed much faith in those swine from the Western Church. I have news, both good and bad. The remains of Saros were not in a tomb. However, something else was. The Sword of the Creator. Ah, the weapon wielded by that thief, the King of Liberation. Thief? Huh. At any rate, it is now in the hands of the Academy's new professor. I doubt you will be surprised to hear that the Crest Stone had already been removed from the sword when it was found. Hmm. As expected. It would be foolish to keep both in the same location. There's more. The professor was able to awaken the sword's true power. Even without the Crest Stone, the sword glowed red. The Professor's Crest is compatible. There is no mistaking it. Absurd. Using a relic without its Crest Stone should be impossible. The King of Liberation's bloodline should not even... Hmm. They must be allowed to keep it, for now. I do not have enough information about the Professor to act. As for your request, I assent. The Death Knight is at your command. Use him well. Good. I believe I will enjoy this a great deal. I cannot thank you enough 
for defeating those invaders in the Holy Mausoleum, and especially for protecting the Sword of the Creator. That sword is one of the hero's relics, and the most precious artifact in the Church's possession. It is also a weapon of terrifying power. For now, I will entrust the sword to you. Please, use it wisely. Lady Rhea, wait! Do you truly mean to give the sword of the Creator to this... stranger? Surely it is not the sort of thing one hands over so readily, even to someone who has the ability to wield it. If someone like Nemesis were to appear again, all of Vodlin would be consumed by war. Nemesis, the King of Liberation. He is an ancient king of mankind who was defeated by Seros over a thousand years ago. When Fodlin was attacked by wicked gods, it is said that the goddess gifted Nemesis with the Sword of the Creator. Nemesis used that sword to defeat the wicked gods, saving all of Fodlin. Henceforth, he was dubbed the King of Liberation. However, his power began to corrupt him until he himself turned to the darkness. Saint Seros was forced to destroy him. Lady Rhea, I beg you to reconsider. Given a little more time, we could more accurately assess this stranger's abilities. No. I have faith, Sedeth. Faith that our friend here will not be corrupted by wickedness. Since the death of Nemesis, none have been able to wield the Sword of the Creator. Now, after all those long years of being sealed away, it has returned and found a new master. I understand. As you wish, Lady Rhea. There you have it, Professor. See that you do not betray the trust the Archbishop has seen fit to bestow upon you. The Sword of the Creator? The King of Liberation? Each tale is more confusing than the last. And I really can't read that Rhea at all. That sword is clearly precious. So why is she so keen to gift the thing to you? I feel as though we have become entangled in a mystery. And there is one more thing that has been plaguing me. The Sword of the Creator. It somehow feels distinct from other relics we have seen. Such as the one that... Oh goodness, what was her name? Kai... Yes, her! The Sword of the Creator is different from her Thunderbrand in one key. It bears a hole where something should have been, but is no more. I despise not knowing what is going on. It... it frightens me. And yet, I place my trust in you. I must, whatever comes to pass. Please swear to cut a path that is your own. Tower of Black Winds The ceaseless rains that satiate the verdant landscape of Fodlin are accompanied by fierce winds and mighty roars of thunder. This abundance of rain, sparkling as it falls against beams of emerging sunlight, is a constant reminder to the people of Fodlin that nature is ever wild and unpredictable. For when the rain finally does take pause, the clouds part and give way to a glorious rainbow. I have a new mission for you, Professor. I would like for you to take your students into Kingdom territory to eliminate some thieves. They stole a hero's relic from House Gautier of the Holy Kingdom of Fargus, the Lance of Ruin. Their leader's name is Miklan. He is apparently a disowned son of House Gautier. This skirmish involves a holy relic and is therefore more than a single noble is capable of resolving. The hero's relics are immensely powerful weapons. We must meet this threat with adequate force. Unfortunately, most of the Knights of Seros are away from the monastery, purging the apostates of the Western, so we are entrusting you with this mission. After all, you wield the Sword of the Creator, which is more than capable of opposing any relic. The Sword of the Creator is a powerful weapon well beyond the other relics. You have nothing to fear. However, 
To ensure that no harm comes to the students, we will also send the monastery's most skilled individuals to aid you. I must remind you that you are expected to conduct yourself in a manner befitting the wielder of that holy sword. Also, you should know that Professor Hanneman has been looking for you. That is all. Professor, I heard about our mission for this month. A thief with a hero's relic is worrisome, but with you at our side, I'm certain we can handle him. After all, you have the sword of the Creator. It was allegedly wielded by Nemesis, the King of Liberation. If the legends are true, you hold the power to stand against entire armies. A band of thieves should be nothing. Even the most elite Imperial forces or the Knights of Saros could not hope to defeat you. I'm just marveling at the potential. Besides, your power does not lie solely in the sword of the Creator. You are stronger and more terrifying than you realize. Professor, when we leave the monastery, will you still think of yourself as my teacher? <sighs> Never mind. I'm being thoughtless with my word. For now, let's just focus on the problem at Good of you to come, Professor. I've heard much about you lately. Specifically, that you are able to awaken the sword of the Creator's power. Thusly, it seems the true nature of your crest has been uncovered. I had, of course, seen your crest before. However, at first, I failed to recognize its true nature. Eventually, it dawned on me that what is visible is perhaps merely a small part of a greater whole. In other words, your crest is too significant to be detected when using normal instruments. After this discovery, I began re- However, I could not be certain. The crest my conclusions led me to was far too unusual. A crest thought to have disappeared from this world in the millennium since the fall of Nemesis, the king of the crest of flames. That is what you possess. Your ability to wield the sword of the Creator has unequivocally proven my hypothesis. A legendary power, dormant since time immemorial and now resurrected. There can be no doubt that this ancient power resides within you. 